Hello, this is Shauna Sue from Cricket Door Studio. So happy to have you here with me this evening um, on this Halloween weekend. I hope you all are going to join us tonight and relax a little bit, have a beverage, just chill. Just take some time to breathe and chill. Maybe learn something new. It's all good. So first things first, I have to apologize. I have uh, the dogs, the shenanigators over here behind me. Every now and then I might have to step away to uh, handle things. You know how puppies can be. So let's do our inventory and make sure we have everything we need before we get started, right? I always wanna make sure I have things laid out to the best of my abilities um, and not have to like stop and be like, oh crap, I need, okay? So let's run through that real quick. Since we're all at home, right? We're painting not in necessarily a studio space. You may have your home studio, right? But since we're not necessarily in a studio space, I know a lot of us that are, are at our kitchen tables. Let's take a moment and look around, check the space. Make sure you don't have anything that you're worried about getting paint on, right? Make sure you're not standing on a nice rug. It's real easy to drip paint if you're standing on a nice rug. It's really easy if you're painting big swipes to paint to flick off the edge of your canvas and wind up with paint across the room. So survey your surroundings for just a moment. Make sure that everything's out of the way that you're super concerned you might get paint on. Also, apron or an old paint shirt. I've got an old Crooked Door shirt tonight, no apron. So I'm good. I'm good if I get paint on this. I think these shirts are meant to have paint on them. Okay. So I'm painting tonight on a 16 by 20 vertical stretched canvas. And when I say stretched canvas, that means it's stretched. I don't know if you can hear it, but I have dogs growling in the background because they're playing. Stretched, wrapped around, stapled on the back. That's what stretched means. And we usually decide early on if we're going to paint our edges or not. Since my canvas is already black, not even worried about it. I'm not worried about wrapping any other color around it. You can if you want, I'm not worried about it, okay? Give me just a moment. Outside, come on. Okay, it's gonna happen a lot tonight. Dog's getting a little crazy. Okay, so I have my canvas and again, I'm gonna orient it vertically tonight. I have a water cup over here to dip my brushes in, right? Always cool or cold, never warm or hot. You always want your water to be cool or cold. If your water is warm or hot, that's how you clean your brushes. But if you leave your brushes soak in warm or hot water, it brush weird, it curdles your, does something funny, cool or cold. Paper towels, you should have some paper towels down here to blot your brushes off on. The brushes I'm working with tonight, speaking of brushes, I have a big background brush. This is a either three quarter inch or a one inch um, oval wash brush. I also have a medium, I have a medium filbert. If you compare it, there's the size comparison, right? Just something a little smaller. Yours might be rounded, your might, yours might be flat. That's okay, just something smaller. And then a pointy brush, a small round. Okay, those are the three brushes I'm gonna work with tonight. And since I know I'm gonna work with those, I'm gonna take them, dump them in my water cup, leave them there. I will leave my brushes there while I'm painting. And I've heard people say that's not good for your brushes. It's not good for your brushes to leave them there for, for days on end. But for a couple hours while I'm painting, they'll be okay. Then at the end of class, I'll clean them out really good, warm soapy water, lay them flat to dry. People wanna set their brushes vertical to dry, don't do that because over time, if you set your brushes vertical to dry, they'll like splay out. The, the bristles will actually like splay out a little bit. So you always wanna lay them flat to dry. Once they're dry, you can put them back in your cup vertical. Okay, something else I always, always, I tend to keep with me paint pen or a Sharpie because I'm really bad at signing my, um, signing my paintings with a brush, just not good at it. So I keep a paint pen or a Sharpie with me to sign my paintings. Okay, and then let's talk paint. Let's talk paint colors. So I listed out the colors that are in the original painting 
but then I added a couple colors. So you can work with whatever you have, but this is what I'm gonna be painting with tonight. And if you got paint from me, this is what you should have. So I know it's white on a white plate, it's hard to see, but I have a healthy amount of white, right? We always use a lot of white paint. And the white that I'm using is block out white. So it's gonna add that really nice, solid, opaque background. I have a nice bright yellow. And then I added orange. If you look at the original painting, the oranges in there, that warmer color in some of those leaves is a mixture of white, yellow, red. I did this painting last night and I really, I really like adding some orange in there. If you don't have orange, it's okay. You mix orange and, or you mix yellow and red, it'll be fine. I have a nice bright red. Make sure your bright red, this is the warning we always give when we're making purple. Make sure your red is bright red, not fire red. You want red that is a little more on the blue side and not the orange side. If you're not sure which red you have, the next color on our palette is blue. I have a deep phthalo blue. If you're not sure which red you have, take a little bit of your red and a little bit of your blue and pull them together and mix them and add a little bit of white and see if you get purple or see if you get poop. If you get poop, your red is too orange, okay? Um, my phthalo blue. And then I added phthalo green. The original painting has the streaks in the pumpkin are blue and a little bit of black. When I did this painting last night, I like to add a little bit of green in there to get a little turquoise in my pumpkin, okay? But if you don't have it, no biggie. And then a little bit of black, a little bit of Mars black, okay? All right, so again, this is my reminder to you as we get started, if you start to get frustrated, if you feel I'm moving too fast, which I'm gonna move pretty fast through this tonight because there's a lot of things we need to do while paint is still wet. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about painting when paint is wet and painting over dry paint. Acrylic paint blends really well while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. Acrylic paint, when it dries, it's not like watercolor. You, you, can't, you can't wet it down again and get it to move around again. Once acrylic paint dries, it turns to plastic and it's kind of set. So I'm gonna wanna do a lot of blending tonight. So I'm gonna have to do that while that paint is all still wet on there which means I'm gonna to have to move pretty fast at times to get it to all blend and work together. So my reminder to you, if you start to feel frustrated, right? Because I'm moving too fast and you're, and you're missing something, because I know a lot of you, you're learning this for the first time, take a breather, right? Put your stuff down, go back and look at the video later and you can pull it up, pull up the video later and pause it and rewind it and really hear what I'm saying and see what I'm doing. That's helpful for some people, even if we're in the studio, especially if we're in the studio, it's helpful. I noticed last night, a lot of people needed to come up really close and personal and see what I was doing. Cause I was saying it, but it wasn't quite translating until they got close to see what I was actually doing. So I'll do a couple really close ups tonight so you can see what's happening. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to get started. So uh, a good idea for you before we do get started, make sure you have some way to reference the inspiration picture. It's always good to have, especially if I'm saying something and you're like, what is she talking about? You can look at our inspiration picture and go, oh yeah, I see that. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So the very first thing I'm going to do, make sure I have a black canvas. If you don't, no biggie. That's all you. Okay. It's whatever canvas you want. I'm going to put a little bit of color texture in the background. This isn't really in the original so much, but I did it the other night and I really liked it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take my big brush. So find your biggest brush. And I was tap, tap, tap in the water cup, right? We wanna soften him up. 
We want to make sure he's clean. And then let's dry him off on the paper towel. Now, anytime you take paint, we always go in the edge of the puddle, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of black and the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of white, just a teeny, just a teeny, teeny bit. I want to get a little texture in the background. So I'm going to do just some diagonal strokes, I'm not going to cover the whole canvas and it looks really white. It's not, it's the way the light is shining on it. If I hold it like that, you can see what it really looks like. It's just a little bit of gray back in there. It's just to make the background a little more interesting. So a little bit of black, tiny bit of white, just some streaks across there, some diagonal streaks. And because I love the turquoise in my pumpkin so much, I'm gonna add a little bit of turquoise. I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue and a little bit of this green, right? Just a little bit of that blue and green right there. A Little bit of that white. If you get too much white, add some black back over. But most of this you won't even see, right? It's gonna be behind those flowers, okay? So very dark very non-specific, all right? I just wanna get some streaks across there. And I'm gonna go a little, little further than halfway down, I think. And you can see, I'm not going all the way out to the edges, just kind of like trails in, fades off, a little bit up there. If you look at the original painting, you can see a little bit of um, like gray texture back in there. Almost looks like maybe knife, a little bit of knife work. Okay. Very, very little paint here. Just a tiny bit of paint. That's about it, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it at that, I think. Maybe a little, maybe a little more color up there. But again, this is something I'm I'm not putting a lot of a lot of effort into. Not a lot of time or effort. Just want to drag some color through there. Now I'm using that turquoise. I'm using that blue and green, and you can see it's very it's very subtle. That blue and green. Um, last night at class, we had some people that were um, dragging a little bit of purple through their background. Super cool because then it ties in with those big purple flowers we're going to put on later. So up to you, it's whatever you want it to be. But then I'm going to go ahead and clean that brush out. Give this a second to dry. Doesn't have to be real dry, right? But the next thing we're going to do is put that pumpkin on there because we have to know where our flowers are coming out of. Okay. I have WWE like big time wrestling back here. Like the sofa is moving on the other side of my canvas. But you know, puppies, as long as they're happy, I'm happy. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna do this painting. So if you wanna reference the original while we're giving this a second to dry, and again, this doesn't have to be dry before we move on. We're gonna put our white pumpkin on there. So you might pick up a little background color, that's okay. And we're gonna put some background color in the pumpkin anyway. So um, we'll, put, we'll put our pumpkin on there. I'll show you how to do that step-by-step. Step. We'll give it some shape. 
and then we'll put our flowers on there. And if you look at the original, you'll see those big purple round flowers. There are three of those. This whole painting seems to be in threes. The yellow sunflowers, there are three of those. The skulls, there are three of those. Okay. So we'll put our uh, our flowers on there and then we'll fill everything in with some with some leaves. That's where we'll get into that red, yellow, orange greenery, the leaves. Okay. All right, time for the pumpkin. Here we go. So find halfway up on your canvas, okay? Find halfway and then I'm going to go down an inch. That's where the top of my pumpkin's going to be. And I'm going to set it down pretty close to the bottom. So big brush, I want to clean that big brush out. Tap, tap, tap in the water cup. Okay. Dry it off on your paper towel. And I'm using my big brush, but I'm going to use it skinny ways, right? We tend to want to use our big brush like this, like the big broad side. I'm going to start out with it like this skinny way so I can do some sketching with it. If a smaller brush makes you more comfortable, that's what you use. But I'm going to use my big brush and just use a skinny ways to sketch. So I'm going to use white. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a really close set of parentheses on there. That's going to be the center of my pumpkin. It's going to look like a white almond. And then we're going to give it like sides and then more sides. Stay with me. So some white with my big brush. Again, halfway, down about an inch. And I'm gonna paint parentheses, something like that, and fill them in. This is just white. And I'm picking up a little bit of my wet black on there. That's okay. That is A okay. And I am about two ish fingers from the bottom. Almond, big white almond. So again, about halfway, down about an inch. I'm about maybe two fingers off the bottom. Eventually it might even go off the bottom. That's okay, right? So hang on to that big brush. We have that, that almond on there. That's the center of our pumpkin. And then we need to give it sides. It looks like we're giving it ears. So a little more white. Skinny ways, sketching. I'm gonna do a line right down beside that. So I've given it like a lobe, an ear, a lobe, and I'm leaving a little bit of black show. That'll help me know where my crease is in my pumpkin. Same thing on both sides. So I've got this one, round that out a little bit. I want a big, big fat pumpkin. Here we go. And do the same thing on this side. So go right down beside that almond. And it's gonna be messy right now, that's okay. Okay, we're just trying to get the general shape on there. Okay, so there's a little pumpkin. You see, I keep stepping back and analyzing it a little bit. I'm actually looking at the, at the picture on the video going, is that what I want? I kind of wanted to round the bottom out a little bit. I love a chubby 
a chubby fat bottom pumpkin. Okay, so I have my almond in the middle. I have a lobe to the right, a lobe to the left. I'm gonna give another lobe to the right and another lobe to the left, same way. So I'm gonna start out by following down, leaving that little bit of black line. Just occurred to me that looks like a banana. I'm kind of stacking bananas. Okay, one more on this side. Go. Something like that, right? Top looks a little weird. Not worried about it because I'm going to have leaves and flowers overhang that top. So where this is all kind of kind of funky and disconnected, not worried. Okay. I'm just going to go back and clean it up with a little bit of white. And you'll notice, even though our white is nice and thick, you can still see through the white a little bit. So I'm going to get a nice coat of white on here, let it dry, and then I'll go back and put some clean white back over it. And that'll just pop that color. That'll just pop it. So I'm good with where that's at for now. It's kind of messy. It's okay. We're gonna call that good. So at this point, you can stay with that big brush if you want, or you can move to a smaller brush. I think I might move to a, to a smaller brush. So I think my medium brush, but I'm gonna use it skinny ways also. So I have my medium brush, clean out, dry it off. I'm gonna use it skinny ways to do some sketching. And I'm going to take some of this blue green, maybe a little bit of black, blue green, tiny bit of black. And I'm going to come up in between where those pumpkin spines are, where that black is. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Messy is okay. If you try to make this too perfect, it all falls apart, okay? So coming up and around, starting at the bottom, up and around my pumpkin bottom. Just very sweepy, shushy brush strokes. And again, I'm starting at the bottom because that's where I want the color to be the heaviest. And then I'm coming up and it's kind of blending with the white a little bit and fading as we go up. Okay. So blue, green, little bit of black. Someone last night, instead of blue, green here, they used orange, which was super cool. So their pumpkin was still mainly, mainly white, but it had those orange highlights in it. Very cool. So right around the bottom of my pumpkin, up those, uh, up those creases, round the edge. Again, starting at the bottom. Because that's where I want my color to be heaviest. And that adds like a little shadow down there. Now I am gonna take that same color, just a little, little bit, right around the top, but I'm gonna be much more, much stingier with it, right? I'm gonna try to stay right just in, in the cracks, just barely around the top. So I want the heaviest color at the bottom and just kind of do a little bit of tracing up there, okay? 
more color at the bottom. Now, if you get too much color, don't, don't worry. Okay, too much color, it, it'll be okay. Because we can go back when things dry and add a little bit of white. But at this point, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good about that. And I feel compelled to, to share this with you because we painted this one at the studio last night. The phrase last night quickly became, if I don't like it, that just means I'm not done yet. Okay. Um, you really do have to be messy with this painting. If you try to control it, it, all, it falls apart. You got to be messy and you have to be okay with just swishes of color, walking on, right? Just a swish of color and move away. And I know that's hard, that's a hard skill. But if you can, if you can hone that skill as an artist, whoo, you're doing good. It's taken me 38 years to get there. Okay. A little more up here on this edge. Okay. I'm gonna pop that brush in my water cup and give you a minute to, to get to a happy place there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to those purple flowers. And these are gonna be fun. And it's another, it's another one of those things. You gotta be messy. You gotta be super duper messy. I'm gonna get close again here. So if you need to look at it later, Okay, it is very messy. Again, we start with the heavy color at the bottom and pull it up. And then we do a little bit of color at the top, but we want the heaviest color at the bottom that creates that shadow. Okay. Okay, on to the purple flowers we go. So there are a couple different ways you can tackle this. The way, the way I choose to tackle it is putting on my big focal points, which I think are the, like that purple flower, that is a big focal point that's up and just a little to the left and then give him his two friends and then put on the yellow flowers and then the skulls and then fill things in around. Um, other artists would choose to work from the back forward. So they would start to put in a lot of greenery and things and then start to layer their big flowers in. I think because we paint so fast, we're doing one painting in a, in a couple hours. I choose to have those big bold flowers exactly where I want them and then I can always put little bits around them okay if I were spending days weeks months working on a painting I would probably do it the other way I would probably work my greenery and then start adding flowers as I felt they belonged just to, there are just two different ways to handle it but for this type of painting and for our time constraints, I'm gonna start with the big flowers and then fill in all little bits of things. Okay, here we go. Find your big brush. We're gonna leave that pumpkin alone for now. So big brush, I'm gonna clean it out. So tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the water cup. Tap, tap, tap. 
and then dry it off. Okay. And now I'm going to mix. I know my red and purple, or my red and purple, my red and blue make a really nice purple. I've, I've worked with them before. I know they're going to work well. If you're not sure about your red, do a little, a little test mix because you don't want to have poop flowers, okay? So red and blue together. Okay. And I'm going to put that big purple flower. So about the size, again, my canvas is a 16 by 20. So I'm going to go maybe about the size of my palm, um, about the size of a baseball, up and a little to the left, just a big circle. And I'm just filling it in. Oh, that is not a circle. <laughs> Sorry. Round that out. Ooh, there we go. Something like that. A little circle-ish. And again, this is going to feel like I'm moving fast, but I want to do this while that's wet. So I have my purple filled in. I'm going to put my brush in my water cup. I'm going to go to my pointy brush. Whip white. And if you look at the original painting, you'll see the highlight of these flowers is on the top right. So with white on my pointy brush, I'm always going to start at the top right of this flower and work my way around to the right and across the top and down. And I'm going to do shaky hand. So to do shaky hand, this will all make sense in a minute. To do shaky hand, I'm going to I'm going to hold my brush out here. If I hold my brush the way I normally would hold it, like a, like a pencil, pen, the way I would write, it's too controlled. I find it more helpful to hold it out here and that's gonna make it shakier. And I'm gonna get close so you can see what I'm doing. And again, my highlight is at the top right. So I'm gonna start here, little shaky hand. And you can see it's blending with that purple. I'm going around in a circle. Now I feel I need more white. So let me reload my brush. And I'm gonna go back to the top right again because that's where I want it the brightest. I don't wanna start with that clean white down here at the, the bottom left, it would be too bright. So every time I get, I get paint on my brush, I always go into that top right-ish area with that clean white. You can move on around after that once you've worn some of that white off of there. Okay, shaky hand. A little more white. And you can see I'm going all the way out to the edge, Ooh, maybe even out past the edge. And I'm leaving that dark, that dark center. And I just keep getting a little, little more white back to the top right. I had somebody say last night, um, I keep saying shaky hand and somebody last night said, oh, doctor's handwriting. And I'm like, oh yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? Doctor's handwriting. But I think what we're going for here is you're looking straight down into a flower and each one of those squiggles, it's like you're looking at the very top edge of a petal, of that flower petal. But the most important part is every time you get clean white, starting at that top right corner. Because that's where you want that brightest spot. Okay. Oh, did everybody breathe through that? That was a lot of fun. 
So I'm, there comes a point, like we said earlier, you've got to stop touching it because you'll just blur it all together. I think I'm just about to that point. The beauty of acrylic paint, it's gonna dry pretty fast. So I'm gonna leave it alone, let it dry. And then I can come back with some clean white and get some more squiggles in there. Okay. Um, one, one last thing I'm gonna do to that flower with that pointy brush and a little bit of white, I'm gonna do some little doot doot doots right in the middle. It's like the, the pollen on the end of the, ooh, my biology's bad at this point, stamen. Is it stamen, Emily? She was, she wasn't, she wasn't listening. <laughs> I think so, right? It's the little poops that stick out of the flower in the middle. I wanna put little, little dot, dot, dots right in the middle there. I'm gonna concentrate them around the top part. Let me get close. Concentrate them around the top part of that dark space. Just little dot, dot, dots. Now later when that purple's dry, you could add a little yellow or a little orange, but we don't want poop. So you don't wanna add orange with your purple still wet. Okay, and I'm gonna call that one, I'm gonna call that one temporarily done. Okay, so I have the one on there. I'm gonna go ahead and add two more. I'm gonna add a smaller one here and a medium size here. And I'm gonna move through those two pretty quickly, but the same way I did that big one. I'm gonna go ahead and get my purple on there for both of those. I want a small one right here, and a medium-ish one right, right there. Once I have my purple in there, got to move fast while it's still wet. Shaky hand it, top right corner, doctor's handwriting. Right, squiggles. Starting at the top right, every time, top right. And I love it, I feel like this one's a little more blue. I'm okay with that. So fun. You guys, I love painting. I'm so glad you're here to paint with me. This does my heart good. Okay. That one, move on to this one. Remember, every time you get paint, you start out top right corner. That's where you want it the brightest. And I know I sound like a broken record, but that's important. That's what's gonna help give your, give your flower some highlights, give it some depth. You want the brightest spot to be top right. Doesn't mean you don't go to the left and the bottom, you do, but you keep the brightest part top right. And then my little doot doot doots in the middle. Again, in that darkest spot, concentrating them at the top of that dark spot, that dark center. Look at those, those are good. No, sir. 
Come on, Chad. Okay, so now that you have the skill to do that, you can continue to play with those, right? Love them or hate them, right? But, but we've learned something new tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next kind of flower because I know this is something you can work on at your own, at your own pace. I wanna go ahead and move on to that next, that next step. Okay, so my next step is that um, that sunflower. So I'm going to, you can use your small brush if it's not super duper tiny small or your medium brush skinny ways. I'm going to use my small brush because my pointy brush because it's not super, super small. Okay. I'm going to clean it out, dry it off, and we're going to handle these sunflowers differently. So we have to have, when we, when we paint a flower like this, when we paint a flower like a sunflower with big, big hanging out petals, I like to pull the petals to the center. So I'll start on the very, very outskirt edge of that petal and pull it to the middle. I see a lot of people want to start in the middle and pull out. That's fine if that's you, right? But I think if you do that, it makes sure flower look a little more like a fan. I want mine to have those defined crisp edge petals. And to do that, I'm gonna start out and pull in. To do that, I have to know where I'm pulling into. So I have to put my center on there first. So I know where I'm pulling those petals into. Okay. To do that, again, I'm gonna use my pointy brush because it's not super duper small. Kind of seen better days, but that means it's gonna hold a lot of paint. So I'm gonna use red. This is for my centers. Red and just a little bit of black. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm gonna put my centers on there. Let's start with, now let's go ahead and put all three of them on there. So my biggest flower is up here and I'm gonna use red, a little bit of black and an oval, kind of looks like a spaceship. It's an oval, but it's kind of on a 45-ish. And if you're looking for a size, it's maybe three fingers wide, three by one and a half, something like that. So red, little bit of black. And let's go ahead and do the other centers while we're at it. I'm gonna do another one over here. And he's kinda, he's a little bit smaller but he's oriented the same way, right? Kind of diagonal-ish on a 45-ish. And then again, we like this painting in threes. So my third one is gonna be right in here. And he's gonna be round because we're gonna look straight in at him. And he's about, I don't know, quarter, about the size of a quarter. and then clean that brush out. Angle this to get the light. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's start with this big guy up here. And he's a flower that we're not looking straight on at him. We're kind of looking at him a little sideways. So we can see those big, those big petals on the back, but the front petals are gonna be really short. I'm gonna take that either small brush or medium brush, whatever one makes you happy. 
I'm gonna clean it out and dry it off. And I'm gonna use yellow and a little bit of white. I have to add white to my yellow because my yellow is too transparent by itself. So yellow, a little bit of white right there, probably about a 50-50. About a 50-50. And shaky hand. I just had to remind myself so I didn't choke down on the brush. Okay. Shaky hand. I'm going to start with the petals on the back side. And again, they're out. I'm starting out at the end and pulling in. These are end of the season sunflowers. Right. They're starting to get a little. Oh little uh what they've seen they've seen the end of the end of summer starting to get a little wilty okay let me reload my brush yellow a little white and i'm it's like a sunburst up and over the top okay shaky hand Oh, more paint. Okay, now, as we work our way around, they're gonna start getting shorter. So by the time I get to the sides, my petals are gonna start to get shorter. And we, when we get down to the front, they're gonna get really short, like a quarter of the length of the ones in the back. Still shaky hand it. And I'm going in with my with my brush and just grabbing a little bit of that, a little bit of that red, red black, pulling it out into my petals a little. It's kind of playing. Okay. And then the last thing I'm gonna do to this flower, I need some little petals that are flipped up in the front. So little yellow, little white. And the last thing I'm gonna do along this bottom front edge, the, the front of that red, I'm gonna do a couple petals that pull down and in. So these are kind of split, right? We have around the bottom of this, the center, we have petals that pull down and petals that pull, petals that pull up and petals that pull down. And if I were gonna highlight anything, I might take a little more white and really highlight the petals here that are scooped up. So a little more white right here to highlight these guys. Get some little shushes of white down and through there. But you want that brightest spot to be right on that front edge. Okay. I feel like I need another petal right there. Always reevaluating, right? Always trying to decide what I'm missing. There we go. Okay. And then with that little bit of yellow and white, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the purples. Some little doot doot doots along the top edge of that center. 
Hold that, that, that. Oop, I need a little more white on my brush. So messy brush, but I'm using, I added clean white. Dot, dot, dot. Mostly along that top edge of that center. Okay. Shall we do two more? Let's do it. This guy over here at the left, kind of the same way. The one in the middle is different, okay? But the one over here at the left, he's gonna be, he's gonna be kind of the same as this guy. We're gonna see the, the side of him. So yellow and white, I've got my center on there. And around the back, that's where my petals are gonna be the longest. So I'm gonna start with that longest petal. Ooh, my shaky hand got a little, got a little cray cray there. Got a little weird. Okay, just means he's right at the very end of summer. And then they get shorter. And if you don't have room, that's okay. Start overlapping or tuck in behind the other flowers. There's going to come a time here at the end that everybody's going to overlap. Okay, getting shorter around the front. And then with a little more white, those little scoopy petals that pull down in the front. And then my little, my little doot doot doots up around the top. Doot doot, little dot dot dots. So I have those two, my third one straight on. All his petals are gonna be nice and long, okay? So let's go ahead and pop him in there. And he's gonna start to overlap. His petals might go a little over top of this purple. Oops, keep reminding myself shaky hand, right? So I don't choke down on my, on my brush so hard because I want this to all be very wibbly wobbly. This is your reminder too, if you feel I'm moving too fast, take a breather, okay? This guy, because I can see the petals all the way around nice and full, I don't need to do those little scoopy petals, those little scoopy petals in front, but I do still need to do the little, the little dot, dot, dots in the center along the top part of that dark. Okay, and you'll notice too, none of these uh, flowers, none of them have stems. We're just kind of popping them in there. We'll fill in the greenery later. Okay. All right, so I'll give you a minute to, uh, to get to a point to move on. We're gonna add our skulls next. I'm so excited. Um, also in the meantime, I'm giving this all a little time to dry. So then I can put some clean white in and in a couple areas to give myself some real nice, sharp, bright highlights. Okay. So let me give you a minute to get to the next place. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. I love this painting. I'm loving how this is turning out.
Okay, skulls. Here we go. I'm going to use probably that medium brush, that medium flat brush. Mine's a filbert, so mine's curves, not flat, but a smaller brush, not your big brush. Clean it out, dry off, and we need clean white. And our magic number is three, right? So I'm going to put three skulls on there. So we're going to do them in white first, give them a minute to dry, and then we'll we'll do other things. We'll put faces on them. Okay. So to paint a skull, again, I have I have one of my smaller brushes. I'm using that medium, my medium filbert. I'm gonna do, everybody's making fun of me last night because it's around the ovally rectangly shape, right? Very, very specific. No, sir. No, sir. Roundy, ovally, rectangly. It's kind of a rounded square, right? It's a square shape, but it's got round edges. And I'm just looking from the tooth line up. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put one right up in here. So it's a square, but it's very rounded. And it's probably, I don't know, inch and a half by inch and a half, maybe, right? And I'm starting to overlap. I'm in front of one of my petals there. I'm okay with that. And once I have that rounded square, then at the bottom, I'm gonna put the jaw. It's just a little boop line. That's it. That's all there is. Boop. Let it dry. So I'm gonna do two more of those. And I wanna, I don't wanna orient them all straight up and down. I'm gonna change the orientation a little bit. So my one over here, I'm gonna angle him a little, a little outside, a little to the right. Let's see, I'm gonna put him right over here. So again, roundy, about an inch and a half by an inch and a half ish. It's a rounded square. Ooh. I think my puppers are feeling the Halloween vibes tonight. And then the bottom jaw. Okay. And then one more again, because our magic number on this painting is three. Oh, I'm gonna do one more right in here. And I'm gonna try to turn him a little bit the other way. So he's not straight up and down. Perfect. I round the ovally square with a little jaw at the bottom, little rectangle at the bottom. Boop. And then I'm not going to put the face on yet. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry and we'll, we're going to move on to something else. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to take a minute since I have clean white on this brush. I'm going to take just a moment and do a couple swipes of white down here in my pumpkin. Now that I know my pumpkin is dry. And do you remember we had the dark? We started at the bottom and worked our way up with the light because that created shadow, right? With the light, we want to start at the top and work our way down. So with that white on my brush, I'm going to give some, woo, some pops of white here. It's really gonna help that pumpkin glow from the top down. Just a little bit of clean white, top down. Oh, that's fun.
And I might even go back in now that my purple flowers are dry. Go back in with my small brush with some white shaky handed top right. Give me just a couple little pops of a bright white right along the top right edge of those flowers. Now that I'm, I know it's it's dry and it's not gonna all blend in. So just taking this moment to add some little some little pops of highlights. And it's so subtle, but it, it really does make a difference. Those little details. Some little little pops of light there in the centers, clean white. And I think the same thing in my sunflowers too. Give them some little white shushes. You can play as much or as little with this as you want. Again, I really feel if you're not happy with where you're at, it just means you're not done yet, right? You have to get in there and mess it up. Because this is one of those paintings, if it's too perfect, it just kind of all falls apart. You have to have all those random shaky brush strokes. Okay. So I just went in and added little, little pops of white here and there. Top right corners, back in the centers of my flowers a little. Oh, this one needs, he needs a little pop of white right there in the middle. Little bright white doot doot doots. There we go. Okay, oh, I'm liking it. Liking where we're at. Okay, giving my, uh, giving my skulls time to dry. Let's go ahead and add some, keep saying greenery. It's the orange, the orange bits. Um, and I keep saying greenery because we know it, it's leaves. It's supposed to represent leaves. So I'm gonna to go to my big brush. You know what, strike that, strike that. Small brush first, pointy brush. And you get to decide now what color you want in there. The original painting, the colors are very coral, which would be red with a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna go right in with orange. And then I might add a little red, add a little yellow, but I'm gonna go right in with orange. Remembering, however, all the paint I use is very transparent. So I have to add white to it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my stems in and then I'll add leaves in. So I'm gonna take some white with my pointy brush some orange, okay, some orange and white there, pointy brush. And I wanna figure out where I want my, my stems to live. And if this isn't making sense, just watch. Sometimes it helps to see like the full process start to finish. So I wanna put, I want something right here. And I want something in here. I'm not even really looking at the original anymore. Just kind of balancing it out where I think I want things. Something here. I think I even want something down here on the pumpkin. Okay. So it looks like I just put random, random orange lines all over my canvas. But this is all gonna make sense. So watch how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use my big brush and I'm gonna load it up with paint, a lot of paint. 
and I'm going to use it skinny ways. And these leaves, no, sir. These leaves are very much like uh, flower petals. You have to pull in to the stem. Like our flower petals, we pulled into the center. These leaves, we have to pull into the stem. If you pull out, then it looks like a fan, right? And I want mine to be nice and crisp on the edges and then pull into that stem. Let me show you. So I'm gonna take some white and some orange with my big brush. Let me get close so you can see. And I'm using a lot of paint. I'm really loading that brush up, okay? So I've got orange and white mixed together. And then this is what gives you dimension. I'm gonna take with that orange and white on my brush, a little swipe of white and let it hang out there on the end, okay? So I have orange and white mixed together and then a little swipe of white that just hangs out on the end. I'm gonna use my brush skinny ways and wherever the white is, I wanna make sure that is, is pointing up, facing up. So here we go. So I'm gonna start here with this one. And I always have to have one that pulls right into the middle. So skinny ways, I've got my white pointing to the top. I know it's so hard for you to see what I'm doing. Pull in and let go. And then pull in. And it just kind of fades down into, down into there. Okay, let me do another one. So orange and white or yellow, red, white, right? Find a color that makes you happy. A little swoosh of white on the end, making sure the white is up, in, pulling into that stem. So I'm gonna do that same thing on all of these. A little white, pull in. And if you're not sure what I'm doing, I'm gonna get close one more time. So if you need to, to rewind and watch it later, you can. So orange and white, white right on the end. <clears throat> you always have to, so my stem is coming down this way. I have to start by pulling straight back up to that stem. And then right side, left side, right side, left side. And I know it's, it's hard to see my hands in the way. One more. And remember your painting's not glued in place, right? Flip it around. You're not bolted down, right? And maybe if I go, maybe if I go this way. So pulling in. And then left, down a little bit right, down a little bit left. These are all kind of offset, like stair steps. Okay. Now I have a lot of, lot of naked space happening. So this is where I'm gonna really start to play. Orange and white on my brush. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some yellow, just right on there. Add some yellow in there. And then a little swipe of white on the end. I had a whole hot mess happening on there. 
and I'm going to come in and put leaves in that aren't attached to a freaking thing, right? They're not attached to anything. I want a, a couple right in there. And I want maybe one, two, three right in there. Don't know how I'm feeling about that yellow, but I've started it. So I need to do it in a couple places so they're not super weird. With that same mess on my brush, I'm gonna add some red. And then a little swoop of white. I have so much happening on there right now. Let's see, we'll do. Ooh, those are fun. We'll do some, some leaves that just kind of fill in here, not really connected to anything. Some down in here. Again, they're not, they're not connected to anything. They just kind of trail in there. And I need to step back now and see, see if I'm balanced. I feel like I'm a little heavy to the left. I feel like I need to put a couple more on this right side. See if we can balance it back out that way. Don't be afraid to get some down on your pumpkin. Don't be afraid as you do this to very gently, because we don't want to lose the pumpkin altogether, but to very gently put some, um, some streaks down on your pumpkin. So I've got a little bit of this color. What if I just swoosh? So subtle. But I just swooshed a little bit. right down the edge of my pumpkin. Again, not much, not much, but it's nice to have just that little, that little bit of color down in there that ties it all in. Okay. Ooh, we're doing so good, so fun. Let's see. So you can put so much stuff up in there and keep playing, but any place you have, you have empty space now, what if you take one of your brushes, I think I'm gonna use maybe my medium or my small brush, I think. I'm gonna use the handle with some white and in places where I have little gaps, I'm gonna do three little dots. Do, do, do. And I'm just gonna do this in white. You can do other colors if you want. Do three little dots. What if I have do 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 right there? Where else? Maybe over here. Oh, maybe up here. Over there. Maybe in here. Maybe up in there. Just any place I have some gaps. Those three little, three little dots. Fun, fun. Oh, you guys, we're getting close to the end on this one. <clears throat> Let's see, a couple more things we need to do or not. You're painting, you do as much or as little as you want, but I'm gonna do a couple more things. I wanna do some little swirls in the background. So I'm gonna take my pointy brush, clean it out with a little bit of green or blue, right? One of those darker colors, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white. So I'm looking for a gray, grayish green, right? Black, white, add a little bit of green. It's just kind of a muddy, muddy little color down there. You can do the same thing with blue if you want, gray and add a little blue. 
and I'm going to come out of some of these spaces with some little twirls. So maybe out of here. Zoop. Maybe. Maybe out of here. Maybe. Maybe out of here. Maybe. Where else? No, sir. Come on, sir. Let you go. Maybe one more over here. Make sure you're looking to see that your painting's balanced, right? That's where you can add those little details that help add balance back to it. You could see my painting started to get real heavy on this side. So then I went in and did some filler and kind of filled it back out to that side a little bit. See that green gray on there? Maybe I'll get a couple shushes of that down in my pumpkin. Don't wanna to play too much down in that pumpkin, but I love um, messing it up a little bit. Okay. Faces on our skeletons, skeletons, skulls, faces on our skulls. I think that might be our last step. Okay, make sure your skulls are dry before you do this. I'm gonna take my small brush, clean it out, dry it off. And with black, I'm gonna start with the nose. So I'm gonna start with this guy up here. I'm gonna start with the nose and it's an upside down heart. So I'm gonna press and pull up and press and pull up. Little nose and then round eyes. I'm gonna attempt to get them the same size. <laughs> attempt, you know. And then where I put these two shapes together, I'm gonna put a line across there. Oh, I just got in one of my petals. There we go. So a line across there and then some straight up and down teeth marks. Fun. Okay, let's do another one. So nose. It's an upside down part. Circle eyes. Line across where the mouth is. And then straight lines. Okay, got one more to do here. So heart. Upside down heart, eyes. And mouth. Now you can do uh, one more thing on those uh, skeletons, on those skulls. You can take, if you want, you can take maybe a little bit of that blue little blue green and come down and give them little jaw mark lines. Right, little jaw mark lines if you want, right, right down there, maybe across the chin. You can just leave them white if you want. 
Okay. But again, it's all about those little details, right? And friends, I do believe with that, I was gonna say, I think we're done, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight these swirls just a little bit. I feel like they need a little, a little something. It just felt kind of, kind of plain. That makes me feel better. Okay. So the very last thing every artist does, I think it's very important for every artist to sign their painting. So we usually sign bottom right, bottom left. You can sign on the back if you want. If you sign on the back, sign on the wood. Um, don't sign on the canvas because it could bleed through. With the black canvas, I'm not as concerned about it, but um, make sure you do sign your paintings. I like to sign it and date it, even if it's just with the year. So let me see if I can find a silver Sharpie in my supplies. There we go, silver Sharpie it is. So I will sometimes use just plain old Sharpies. You can use um, the paint pens, um, oil-based if you want. You can always paint oil on acrylic, not the other way around. You can't paint acrylic on oil. So if you have oil Sharpies, you can use those. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my put my little signature right here at the bottom of the pumpkin, SF smooth, with a little 22. And I'm going to call that done. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. We kind of we kind of sped right on through that. But I feel like I showed you several different techniques that then you can go in to continue to play and, and master and work with a little bit. Okay. So for Crooked Door Studio, I'm Shauna Sue. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you need the recording, as soon as I stop recording, I will uh, get an email from Zoom and I'll post it on the event in the discussion so you can access the recording and then go back through and watch something closer if you need to, okay? So thank you all so much for painting with me tonight. It's been good for my soul. I hope it's been good for you. Happy Halloween, everyone. Have a great weekend.